Perfect. Okay, so as I said, sir, in Akano, it's messy up there. DBC's journey towards its first test, test collection. Please. Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Serena Cano, and I'm going to present, uh, I'm going to talk about the experience of a medium sized company who built and in, implemented a test collection within its workflow. And so I work at DBC Digital, which is. Um, uh, I work at DBC Digital, which is a Danish company who uh, develops and maintains the bibliographic and IT infrastructure for the, public, the Danish public libraries. And uh, the goal of my presentation is to talk about some of the struggles a company might face when it decides to uh, implement uh, tools that might, that might seem normal or ordinary within the field of information retrieval, and how we, it is possible to find a balance between theory and the specific real situation. Um, so, among other things, um, the BC Digital um, develops and deploys the search engine used for the public website bibliotech.dk, uh, which gives access to um, the holdings of the public libraries and it also supports the interlibrary exchange. And uh, for a very long time, the only evaluation or the main evaluation made was focused on efficiency. But after a while, it was clear that something more was needed if we wanted to understand how good the system was and if it was good enough. And so we decided to introduce a new perspective uh, focused on effectiveness. And uh, I like to think about this as a small revolution because it uh, forced us to uh, think about more systematically, systematically about the users and the information needs. And it somehow brought back to the center of the fundamental question that is, uh, what do the users need and what do they want and what they might find relevant. Uh, so we decided to build a test collection uh, from scratch. And uh, this was our very first experience with it. So we faced several challenges, uh, both practical and theoretical. And we can think about them in terms of uh, resources, time, and data. And I'll try to... Um, Walk you through some of the struggles and the decisions that we made, uh, just to give you an idea of the process. Uh, so first of all, uh, we had to define what a test collection actually is. And um, despite the fact that there are a lot of papers and research about how to improve a test collection and how to fix specific problems, it was really difficult to find um, clear guidelines or instructions on how to build a test collection from scratch, so how to proceed. And luckily, uh, we found the work by Sanderson and colleagues, and it was very useful uh, because at least we knew and we have an idea of the, what we needed. So uh, a list of real or realistic queries, um, a set of um, tasks and narratives, and a set of relevance judgments. And then we had to choose the queries. And uh, when we started, it, there were no comprehensive query logs available uh, to um, understand the user's behavior and their needs. Uh, we had no recent data about the loans, and we had it was not possible to directly involve the users. What we had was a um, list with the most the the one thousand most searched queries uh, through the CMS used by the public libraries in two thousand in two thousand and eighteen, uh, and with some of the um, a list of I think was uh, five. Um, click results for each query, the most clicked results for each query. And uh, this is what we had, we had to use. Um, and of course, it's something very different from a query log. And uh, a work of uh, categorization and interpretation was needed to uh, give sense and give meaning to this data set. And in the end, we um, selected a first list of 77 queries trying to uh, include also some of the queries we thought could be particularly uh, challenging for our search engine. And then we had to write the narratives. And again, we didn't have any useful data about the users or um, comprehensive data about the users. And uh, so we decided to um, collectively review uh, the first draft, which was written by a sole expert and assessor. And this might sound a little bit um, unconventional, probably. Um, but it was very helpful for us because uh, it allowed us to um, include several perspectives. And it was also a very nice way to start a conversation about the complexity of the concept of relevance, which was very important. 
And then we had to define a uh, pooling method and understand which documents we wanted to, which records we wanted to, um, to assess. And uh, we decided to use an alternative method to the traditional pooling one uh, to help us to um, manage the lack of resources, the human resources, especially in the lack of time. And um, in the end, these are just uh, examples of some of the things we did in the beginning. And um, in the end of all this, we uh, had our first test collection. So we could start our uh, evaluation to understand uh, how the system was doing. But I think that one of the main, uh, out, um, the, the main results of this work and this process is not only the test collection in itself, but it's uh, uh, the impact that the test collection is having or this work is having on the uh, company strategies and vision. And uh, I've listed some of them. So first of all, uh, it is um, it proves to be an opportunity to start a conversation both within the company between different teams and outside the company with um, clients and stakeholders. Um, it's a way to clearly communicate with the customers and discuss um, problems, issues, additional functionalities. It, it's it's being a starting point for cross-departmental projects between different teams. And uh, it is also a way to uh, understand and check constantly which resources we have and what we need if we want to improve uh, the tool and the evaluation and the search engine. For example, we need, uh, we need to focus more on data gathering uh, about the users. And um, it is also a, a constant reminder that we have to think about uh, the users, the variety of users that we have, uh, the users we want to, um, the users that are using our, our system and the, their searching pro pro processes and the information needs. So what I would like to uh, take home from this uh, experience is that, yeah, there's probably a, still a huge gap between academia and the company's realities in terms of knowledge, uh, limited resources, and company's needs and, and goals. And uh, yeah, as my, the title of my, of my upshot says, it's messy out there. And I don't, see, I don't think that messiness is necessarily a bad thing. Uh, because it can also be part of a learning process, especially if you are a small or medium-sized company who is trying to uh, implement tools uh, outside of academia. Uh, on the other hand, there are still some basic problems that might look as boring and uh, trivial within the academia, but they are still very real problems out there. So um, I think that there's still need for some support uh, from the companies. Uh, especially those who don't have uh, who don't have a research uh, department within the, the company. So yes, uh, this was it. I love to hear your thoughts about these struggles and uh, suggestions. And yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So this is always never boring for us when there is a test collection building somewhere. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about that. Uh, but for sure, there is a lot of experience. And are there specific questions in the room or online? We have Alessandro, and then Alberto help me with the online. Okay. So first of all, thank you for the talk. And mention your struggles. Did you succeed in the end, or you are still doing it? Uh, sorry, I, I, can you repeat that? Oh, so you, you mentioned you were struggling building yes. the data collection. Yes. Did you succeed? Uh, in the it's end? a work in progress. So okay. we, we managed to fix some things. Uh, so we changed some things along the way, but we are still working on it because, for example, we don't still we don't have uh, enough data about the users. So we are still trying to understand how to uh, better fix that part. And but still, there are things that are important. So yeah, it's a working process. Okay. And second question is about implicit or explicit feedback. So yes. have you been thinking about that, like one direction or the other or both? Uh, yeah, about the implicit feedback, uh, the moment we have the, um, the query logs and the click-through rate, for example, it would be um, useful. Uh, but in our case, it wouldn't be as useful as in other cases, because uh, we are talking about um, uh, bibliographic records, 
Uh, so the click is not necessarily a, a manifestation of relevance, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be useful. Uh, um, that's for sure. And about the explicit, uh, yes, uh, that is a little bit difficult to implement. So um, there's uh, right now, um, there's been a, a user development and uh, there's a user evolution within the company. So we have uh, an organization who is um, able to involve real users. So that could be an idea, but uh, I don't I don't see it easy to uh, get explicit feedback from the searches. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if I may, I said I mean uh, now the area is not very active, uh, especially in Europe about digital library. I mean the area is active, but not about the law analysis of the logs and stuff, but. 10 years ago or so, there were several projects at the European level, for instance, the European Library mm -hmm. uh, and Tel Plus was another project. And they looked into logs of libraries, they did analysis. So probably there you can find uh, relevant research and data. And if you speak with Giorgio, uh, and Dimitri, well, he was here probably just around a lunch or whatever, he worked on log analysis exactly in this scenario. So there might be ideas there. And I also suggest you to present this and all the problems you have maybe to a digital libraries conference, mm -hmm. because there you have the other side. I mean, yes. other you the users, yes. more or less, or the librarians or, and that could be also a good idea. I mean, uh, it's, it's good these two together and uh, because there is work, but as you said, you always need resources and there are no trustworthy collections out there. I mean, maybe there are, but we need a specific one. Yes. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, looking at that. Well, this is my two cents on this. And uh, last minute questions? No? Yeah, Ari. So just a quick question, but did you think about using the transactions because you also have access to those and we in academia usually don't. Uh, so people search, they then land the book, they take it and they return it at some point. So you could ask them. Yes, we, we could definitely ask, yes. I mean, we have to involve a lot of libraries, but yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good idea. I will try that. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Serena.